Standard 6 Geography Chapter Number 1 The Earth and the Graticule Make friends with maps. Observe Figure 1.1 and answer the following questions. Which places are shown on the map? Answer Lima, St. Petersburg, Rome, Kimberley, Agra, Port Blair, Tokyo are the places shown on the map. In which city is the Taj Mahal located? Answer The Taj Mahal is located in the city of Agra. In which continent is the Taj Mahal located? Answer The Taj Mahal is located in the continent of Asia. In which direction is the Taj Mahal located for Graham in St. Petersburg, for Katya in Kimberley, for Michiko in Tokyo and Minakshi in Port Blair? Answer The Taj Mahal is located in the southeast subdirection for Graham in St. Petersburg, in the northeast subdirection for Katya in Kimberley, in the southwest subdirection for Michiko in Tokyo, and in the northwest subdirection for Minakshi in Port Blair. Shahid in Agra is specifying the directions in which the others live. How will he express them? Answer Shahid will specify that Michiko lives in the northeast subdirection. Minakshi lives in the southeast subdirection, Katya and Enrique live in southwest subdirection, and Natalia and Graham live in the northwest subdirection. In what direction will Natalia in Rome and Enrique in Lima say the other child lives? Will their answers be the same? Answer Natalia will say that Enrique lives in southwest subdirection, and Enrique will say that Natalia lives in the northeast subdirection. Thus, their answer will not be the same. Graham, Katya, Michiko, Natalia, Minakshi, Shahid and Enrique have answered the above questions differently using directions and subdirections. The Taj Mahal is located at one and the same place and that is Agra. However, when each one of the children told the direction from their respective places, their answers were different. This means that the use of directions alone does not help us to accurately describe the location of a place. That is why it became necessary to find a new system to state the precise location of any place on the earth. Let us see what it is. Think a little. Observe the globe in your school. Think about the following questions and then discuss them. There are some vertical and horizontal lines on the globe. Which of these lines are more in number? What labels do these lines have? What similarities and differences do you see in the labels? Will it be possible to actually draw such lines on the earth? Explanation Figure 1.2 Earth's Size Figure 1.2 shows the lengths of the east-west and north-south diameters of the earth. This will give you some idea about the size of the earth. Oceanic waters, uneven nature of the land, forests, innumerable islands of different sizes and buildings make it impossible to actually draw such lines on the earth. In order to overcome this difficulty, geographers developed a miniature model of the earth in the form of a globe. This can be used to determine locations on the earth. One can actually draw horizontal and vertical lines on a globe though not on the earth. Thus, they are imaginary lines on the earth. Angular distance Figure 1.3 Angular distance 1 The location of any place on the earth is determined with reference to the center of the earth. In order to do it, we consider a straight line joining the point on the surface and the center of the earth. At the center, it makes an angle with the plane of the equator. The measure of this angle is used in determining the locations. For example, in figure 1.3, the measure of angle XMV is 30 degrees. That is, its angular distance from the equator is 30 degrees. Look at the figure and tell the angular distance of y from the equator. Figure 1.3 shows another plane. It passes through x. It is parallel to the plane of the equator. 
observe 1.3 and see how it meets the surface of the earth. Note that it forms a circle on the surface. Any point on this circle and the equatorial plane form an angle of 30 degrees at the center of the earth. Do it yourself. Use figure 1.4 for the following. In the upper portion of the circle, at the center X, draw angles of 20 degrees. V1, X, K1 and V2, X, K2. That is, K1 and K2 being the points on the circle. Draw an ellipse joining K1 and K2. In the lower half of the circle, mark angles of 60 degrees and name the points on the circle as P1 and P2. Draw an ellipse joining P1 and P2. Can you tell? Are the distances between K1, K2 and P1, P2 the same? Compare the distances XK1 and XP2. Are these distances the same or are they different? Now, compare the ellipses you have drawn. Which is the larger ellipse? Why? Explanation Parallels of Latitude You must have realized that the ellipse drawn by joining the 20 degree points is larger than the ellipse that joins the 60 degree points. However, the distances XK1 and XP2 are the same. This is because we are dealing with a sphere. Note that though these lines appear to be ellipses in the diagram, on the globe they are circles. The circles thus created at some angular distance from the center of the earth are parallel to one another. Hence, they are called parallels of these latitudes. The values of parallels are angular measures expressed in degrees. The degrees of the parallels are measured from the equator as shown in figure 1.5. That is why the equator is considered as zero degrees parallel. It is the largest parallel and also a great circle. The angular distance of other parallels towards north and south goes on increasing away from the equator. Use your brain power. Explain the meaning of the term equator. Answer. The zero degree parallel which is the largest parallel and also called a great circle is known as the equator. The equator bisects the earth into north and south parts. The one to the north is called the northern hemisphere while the one to the south is called the southern hemisphere. Towards the north and south of the equator, parallels of latitude progressively become smaller and smaller. On the globe and also on the earth, at the north and south ends of the earth's axis, they appear as points. These are called the north pole and the south pole respectively. While mentioning the value of a parallel, it is necessary to mention whether it is in the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere. The parallels from the northern hemisphere are referred to as 5 degrees N, 15 degrees N, 30 degrees N, 50 degrees N, whereas the parallels from the southern hemisphere are referred to as 5 degrees S, 15 degrees S, 30 degrees S, 50 degrees S. A line joining all the places located to the north of the equator at an angular distance of 30 degrees is 30 degrees north parallel. Hence, all the places on this parallel will be at the same latitude which is 30 degrees N. New Orleans in North America, Cairo in Africa or Basra and Lhasa in Asia are all located on 30 degrees N parallel. The same concept holds good for all other parallels. See figure 1.6. One can draw 181 parallels on the earth at the interval of 1 degrees. At 0 degree, that is the equator. 90 parallels in the northern hemisphere. Minus 1 degree N to 90 degrees N. 90 parallels in the southern hemisphere. Minus 1 degree S to 90 degrees S. Do it yourself. Take an orange and peel off its skin. You will see the segments inside and thin vertical lines on them. Carefully take out one segment. 
observe the segment and the gap it has left in the orange. See figure 1.7. See if the shape of the central and terminal portion of the segment is the same or different. See if the angle of the gap is the same at all points. Find how many segments there are in an orange. An orange is spherical with a circular cross section. There are 360 degrees in a circle. The earth being spherical, we consider 360 degrees with respect to the earth as well. Figure 1.8 Angular Distance 2 In Figure 1.8, Angle ABC, Angle DEF, Angle GHI have the same measure 50 degrees. However, the distances between A and C, D and F and G and I are different when measured on the Earth's surface. That is because the Earth is spherical in shape. Do it yourself. Use figure 1.9 to do the following. Let the line AM be 0 degree. Draw the line MB. Measure the angle it makes with the line AM and write it near B. Note the semicircle that passes through B and joins the north and south poles. Trace it. Now join MC. Measure angle AMC and write it next to C. Draw a semicircle that passes through C and joins the north and south poles. Draw a line that passes through point A at 0 degree and joins the north and south poles. Explanation Meridians of Longitude You will realize that the lines drawn from points A, B and C make angles at M, the center of the earth on the plane of the equator. Through these points we can draw semicircles joining both the poles. Starting with point A, we can draw similar semicircles through points placed at each degree. These semicircles are known as meridians of longitude. One of these meridians is considered to be zero degree. It is known as the prime meridian. The angular distances of the other meridians from the prime meridian are measured in degrees and are called longitudes. You have done this in the activity based on figure 1.9. The zero degree and 180 degrees meridians lie opposite on the globe, forming a circle. This circle divides the earth in the eastern and western hemispheres. All meridians are equal in size. Meridians in the eastern hemisphere are labeled as 10 degrees E, 25 degrees E, 135 degrees E, etc. While in the western hemisphere they are labeled as 10 degrees W, 25 degrees W, 135 degrees W, etc. 30 degrees E is the semicircle that joins all places at an angular distance of 30 degree from the prime meridian. Some of them are Cairo, Harare and Durban in Africa. See figure 1.6. Though the earth is huge in size, we can tell the exact location of places on the earth using latitudes and longitudes. Note that the distance between two adjacent parallels is the same everywhere, but the distance between two adjacent meridians is not the same everywhere. We can see this even on the segment of an orange. The distance between the meridians is the maximum on the equator and goes on reducing towards the poles. At the poles, it is zero. The distance between any two adjacent parallels is 111 kilometers on the surface of the earth. The distance between two adjacent meridians is also 111 kilometer on the equator. To locate the places within the distance of 111 kilometer exactly, we need to divide the unit degree into smaller units. Degrees are divided into minutes and minutes into seconds. Conventionally, Latitudes and longitudes are expressed into degrees, minutes and seconds. Each degree is divided into 60 minutes and a minute into 60 seconds. These values are expressed using the symbols degrees, minutes, seconds. In all, 
we can draw 360 meridians each at a distance of 1 degree. 0 degree prime meridian, 180 degree meridian, 1 degree east to 179 degree east meridians. Thus, we have 179 meridians in the eastern hemisphere. 1 degree west to 179 degree west meridians. Thus, 179 meridians in the western hemisphere. Think a little. A game of reading the meridians on the world map is going on. Shaheen and Sanket are asking each other to locate places on specific meridians and are making notes of the same. Shaheen asks Sanket to locate Rangal Island on 180 degree meridian. Sanket could locate the island in the map but both are confused while making a note of it. They are puzzled whether to write 180 degrees east or 180 degrees west. What would be the precise answer? Please help them. Answer Forming a circle This circle divides the earth into the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere. One can draw 179 meridians in the eastern hemisphere by labeling them from 1 degree east to 179 degrees east. Similarly, one can draw 179 meridians in the western hemisphere by labeling them from 1 degrees west to 179 degrees west. Therefore, 180 degrees meridian is not labeled as 180 degrees east or 180 degrees west. It is labeled only as 180 degrees meridian. Can we use a similar logic with reference to 0 degree meridian as well? Answer Zero degree meridian is known as the prime meridian. Therefore, zero degree meridian is not labeled as zero degree east or zero degree west. It is labeled only as zero degree meridian. Do you know? The distance between any two consecutive meridians is different on different parallels. It is maximum on the equator and it is zero on both the poles. Equator 111 kilometers. Tropic of Cancer or Capricorn, 102 kilometers. Polar Circles, that is Arctic or Antarctic, 44 kilometers. Poles, that is North or South, 0 kilometer. Figure 1.10, the Graticule. The parallels and meridians on the globe form a net that is called a Graticule. This facilitates determining the location of a place. See figure 1.10. Thus we use latitude and longitude for determining the locations on the earth. This method is being used even in today's modern age quite effectively. Geographical Information System that is GIS Global Positioning System that is GPS as also Google Maps Wikimapia and Bhuvan of ISRO on the internet also make use of latitudes and longitudes. This technology is also available on mobile phones and motor cars. Figure 1.11 GPS Instrument Do you know? Indian Regional Positioning System India has achieved self-reliance in global positioning technology with the help of IRNSS, that is, Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System, locating any place in the Indian subcontinent is going to be easy. For this, India is launching its own series of seven satellites. It will then be possible to locate any place in the region of South Asia and the Indian Ocean precisely. Use your brain power. How many parallels and meridians can be drawn on a globe at an interval of 10 degrees? Answer: 19 parallels and 36 meridians can be drawn on a globe at an interval of 10 degrees. I can do this. Express the angular measures of latitude and longitude on a globe or map. Read parallels of latitude and meridians of longitude. Draw a graticule on a spherical object.